part two of this 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro upgrade. What can it be? Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And if you're coming here from part one of this upgrade, welcome back. If you are just now finding this video, then make sure you check out part one. I'll put that link in the description below. So in part one, we left off with upgrading this bad boy here, put 16 gigs of RAM in it and a 500 uh, gigabyte SSD drive. And I left you with a little teaser saying that this was gonna be part two. And that looks exactly like the hard drive from part one. And you're right, I got two of these. They were a really good deal. So I picked up two of them and to go along with it, I picked up this guy, which is a second HDD Caddy. Uh, they used to be called uh, Data Doubler, the company OWC or Otherworld Computing, which makes a lot of really nice, high quality uh, Mac upgrades. Uh, made one of those years ago, and I think these are just knockoffs. But it basically allows you to put a second hard drive in place of the optical drive. So nobody uses CD or DVD drives anymore, at least not very much. So we're going to take this drive and put it in place, which will essentially double our, our data. But that's not all. Now in the last video I said we're going to try something I've never done before, and I'm not sure if it's going to work. Simply putting this in here and putting this in here, that's easy, right? Couple screws, couple cables, no big deal. What I'm going to try to do is get Windows, or Windows 10, running completely by itself on this drive and we've already got the Mac OS Catalina running on the drive that we upgraded and allowing a true dual boot without having a uh, like a partition drive for boot camp I just want to have two separate drives have an option at the boot up to select either Windows or Mac and that's because a lot of times I've got programs that run only on Mac and I've got programs that run only on Windows and if I want to travel somewhere with just one laptop, this will be the one. So like I said, I'm not sure 100% if this is going to work as easy as I want. If not, then there are some workarounds that I read about that, that you can try. So we may have to try some workarounds. But first things first, we're going to crack this bad boy back open. I still got the screws taken out of it from the last video. So all I'll have to do is flip it over, take the case off, and we're going to start taking the old optical drive out. All right, so I shut the computer all the way down, flipped it over. Now I can take this back cover back off. And the first thing, of course, we're gonna do is take the battery cable off. So I use my little spudger here. Just a simple little pry, pry, pry. Bend it back a little bit. Now that's disconnected. So we see over here is our optical drive. So that's what we need to remove out so we can put the, the drive doubler in there. So I'm going to rotate it around here to make it a little bit easier to work on. And the first thing we have to do is we're going to take off these three little cables here, the little data cables. So again, using something plastic to pry with, plastic or nylon. And there we go. So those are up. And we don't want to move those around too much. Next thing we need to do is there's a couple screws that hold this thing in. And one of the screws is underneath this module here. So we're going to have to remove this module. At least take the screws up from it just to move it aside a little bit to get to one of the screws. So let me get ready for that. Alright, so the three screws holding this in. There's one we can see right about there. There's one that's under here that I'll get a better picture of in a second. And then the third one is, like I said, underneath this module. So there's three screws here. One, two, three that we're going to loosen up and take out. And then that should give us enough movement on this module here.
Let's see if this guy moves a little bit. And you've got all these little antenna wires on here that you don't want to tug on too much. And one of them is the camera cable. There we go. There we go. And there she goes. Let's rotate it around to this one. Again, taking care not to hit any of these little tiny wires. Alright, I think I got that one up. It's still in there, but it's up. And then this third one here, let me see if I can shine some light. You can see it right there. So let me grab that one out. And that one's out. So now it should be just a matter of slightly getting this up and out without messing with too many of these cables here. There we go. And there's that last screw here it was kept inside there so I'll poke that out and put it with the others now we can set this aside and here's our optical drive so on the optical drive we do have this connector that we disconnected from the the main board there and we have to take that free from the drive itself because we're going to use that to attach the new one so you don't want to grab by the ribbon cable you want to try to just get it right at the connector and it comes right out. So there's your SATA connector. All right, let's get the new drive ready. All right, so we got this drive caddy out of the bag here, out of the package, and it came with a tiny screwdriver, which we're not going to use because I've got my trusty stiletto here, and it came with four little screws here. So we're going to take our SSD drive, and it's basically got a SATA connector in here that gets relocated to over here, which is where the uh, where the main board needs it. So, so we're just going to take this guy and slide it into the connector here, making sure we got everything lined up. There we go. And it does have this little hole on this side so you can kind of pull it down onto it. And then once you do that, you should have the four mounting holes on the bottom side of the SSD to match up with the four provided screws. I've seen some of these that have the side mounting screws. This one's just right down on the bottom, makes it nice and easy. And you probably don't need all four of these. You can probably use two corners, but since I give them to you, I'm going to use them.
this one's not actually lining up. So we'll just go with the three. All right, I found out why it wasn't lining up. And it's just simply because this hole hasn't been punched out. So there's still a little bit of this, it's like a paper type pad. So there we go. Now we should have all four. So let's try this again. There we go. Now I can see all four holes in there. So let me mount those in and I'll be right back. All right, I get the drive mounted in there. And the next thing we need to do is on the optical drive, that one mount point is not included on this, but it gives you the little mounting holes for it. So two tiny little screws here to take out. So let me take these two screws out, move this over to the, uh, the drive caddy, and then I'll be right back. All right, I got this moved over. Now one little tip when you do this is to put these side by side with each other so you can orient the SATA connector so that you know which way this came. So this, you pulled off this, this one here and put it onto here. Otherwise, if you flip it up, upside down, when you go to mount it in, it's gonna be upside down and you're gonna to have to take everything back out again. So this one's ready to go. I think we're ready to mount it back into the uh, case. All right, so we don't wanna forget our SATA connector here. So let's go ahead and put that back onto the new drive caddy. And that slides right on. So now we are ready to throw this into here. So again, making sure that we don't hit too much of this stuff. All very brittle. I can see one mount point down here is matched up. This guy's matched up. And the last one there, actually, I don't like the way that it, it went in. Let me show you a little bit closer. So it looks like this mount point here kind of got sandwiched in between one of these little wires. So let me see if I can wiggle that around. much to grab on this thing. I think that's going to do it. That's a little bit better. So let me put these two little screw, three little screws in, and I'll be right back. All right, I got those three screws in there. The uh, hardest one was obviously the one that's underneath this module, but I was able to hold my tongue in just the right way so I could get it in there. And then these little tiny mount points that I folded back a little bit to get that up, I folded those back in, and then I use just this little pointer here just to kind of line those back up so that now we can send these three screws back in here. So let me get these three screws and if you didn't mark them when you took them out, the two longer ones are on this side and then the shorter one goes over by the speaker.
And one, two, three. All of them are back in there, nice and snug. So it's just a matter of putting these three connectors back down. And there we go. All finished. All right, so I hooked the battery back up, put the lid back on, flipped it over. Getting the drive inside there was probably the easy part. So now we've got the drive inside the second caddy, got that installed in there and all wired up. That wasn't too hard. So now let's talk about what the second half of this procedure is going to be. So there is a little bit of concern about the SATA channel that the old optical drive used. And I believe it's supposed to be a SATA three gigabytes per second instead of six gigabytes per second. So it's a little bit slower than the actual hard drive bay is. And sometimes these newer SSDs have a hard time with that slower channel. The problem is it's getting harder to find an older three gigabyte uh, per second drive in the SSD at least. So we're gonna see if this works. If it doesn't, the worst case scenario, we can always go back to the original drive and use that as a second drive because that's supposed to work a little bit better but we're going to see if we can get this working. So the first thing I want to do is actually just boot this up go into disk manager and see if I see that second drive in there just to make sure that it is talking on the channel so let's go ahead and open this up and boot it up. Alright so it's all booted up that's, uh, that's a good sign. We're going to go into disk manager or disk utility and see if the second drive is hooked up there. So I see here's the Mac SSD. So this particular drive right here is the drive we started with, with Mac OS, which would mean this would be our second one. So it's showing 512 gigabytes. Now, it would have been smart to use two different brands so you could easily identify them. But at least uh, we see that the original drive is here and obviously it's working because we're inside Mac OS and then the second drive is here and it's uninitialized so worst case scenario I could just go ahead and you know initialize this drive and use it as another 500 gigabytes of storage but we're gonna try to see if we can get Windows going so let's shut this down and try to boot it up with Windows alright so I've got a Windows USB boot drive right in here I'm gonna power it up and hit the command button and see if I can see that USB or actually it's option button. So power it up, hold down the option button, and I should get a drive select. And here we go. So we got the Mac SSD, which is what Mac OS is running on. We've got one here labeled Windows and one labeled EFI boot. So we're gonna take Windows here and tell it to boot that up. And that's probably just the two partitions of this boot drive. So that's a good sign. Saw a little Windows logo flash up there for a second. All right, here we go. I stared at that little flashing cursor for a couple minutes, but it's finally, uh, finally looking like it's booting up here from the disk. And look at that, Windows install. So let's step through this. I'm still not 100% sure that this is going to work. I'm not sure what it's going to see drive-wise, but we're at least going to give it a shot. And if we hit any kind of roadblocks, then we'll try to Google it and find out what to do. So I'm going to try Windows 10 Home. So here's the first thing to look at. We've got a drive zero with three partitions on it and a drive one that says all unallocated. Again, another smart thing would have been if we would have had two different size drives, 
So right now I can obviously see that this is a 500 gig drive and this is a 500 gig drive. Um, so that would have been easier. But I'm going to roll the dice and assume that drive zero is the one that is already partitioned and, and booted up for Mac OS. And this is going to be the, uh, the new drive. And we've hit our first roadblock. It says we couldn't install Windows in the location you chose. Please check your media drive. Here's more information about what happened. So let me find out what that means and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back from Google land. And from what I read, there's a couple different reasons why that error code could have come up. And I've had very low uh, results with searching one of those 8x000 type numbers, those 0x8080 whatever. Um, this one actually came up and it said, hey, you may have too many unnecessary drives plugged in your system when you're trying to install Windows. So I went in and uh, took this drive out. Here's the Mac OS drive. Just unplugged it for now and booted it back up and this is what we're seeing. So it looks like it's going to let us go ahead and install Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and step through this. If you've never done this before, I've got some other videos that show you how to step through Windows step by step. So I'll put a link to those down below. All right. I hit a several uh, roadblocks, which I will explain in just a, a few minutes. But I'm getting further now and uh, still not 100% sure that this is going to work. But um, let me follow this through and see if I can get Windows up and running on this. And then I'll come back and talk to you about the snafus I hit. All right, so I've made some progress. I've got Windows set up on this drive here. So I did want to double check that it worked. I went into Device Manager to see what kind of drivers were missing. And I did make a Boot Camp driver disk, which includes all the Boot Camp drivers that if you did this whole process with Boot Camp, it would work. Um, but in this case, I just downloaded all the drivers to a disk, and I can tell you guys how to do that. But I wanted to get a couple of these drivers set up, and then I'm going to talk about all the steps I took to get through here and, and what the current status is, because we're not done yet. I don't think we're even close to done yet. So let me uh, work on these drivers, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so we've got all the drivers loaded up, and it just rebooted. So we are running Windows 10. Let's go in and look at the uh, specs real quick just to see what we got. And it's seeing the uh, i5, 3210M. It's seeing the 16 gigs of memory that we put in in the last video. And the solid state uh, 500 gigabyte SSD. So everything is uh, good to go looks like in Windows. And let's just check Device Manager real quick. Just to make sure again that all the drivers came in and yes there's no exclamation points so this is good to go so let's talk about how we got here so you saw me put the second drive in you saw me try to install windows on the second drive and you saw me fail epically so so that didn't work so i went in i disconnected the first drive tried again that didn't work long story short it just did not like installing Windows onto a drive that was hooked up to the old optical drive port. So I moved the drive out and I took it, took it out, moved it over into the primary port and that's how I just succeeded at getting Windows. So now my hope is I can put both drives back in and now that it's installed I'll see if I can actually run Windows from that second side. Crossing my fingers, no promises. Let's see what we can do. All right, so I shut it down, flipped it over, opened it up, put all the drives back in that we had uh, anticipated putting in the first place. So the Mac OS drive is in the primary slot. That Windows drive that we just tested out is now in the optical drive slot. And all right, so now we're gonna power it up, hold down that option key, and see if it gives us the option for both the disks that are installed in there. So hit the power button. Hold down Option. And we have two options here. So I'm pretty confident that Mac will boot up. So let me see what happens if we select Windows. All right, 
right, so that did not work, unfortunately. So I booted back into Mac OS, and I do see both disks here. I do see that it's calling this one Boot Camp, since we did load those Boot Camp drivers on there. But it is just not booting into Windows on that uh, secondary uh, SATA channel. So I'm going to guess it's got to be something to do with that, that second channel. I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up as defeat. But I do have some ideas to, to push forward with this plan. So we're going to call it a, a video here. And, uh, and we'll come back with a part three. And hopefully part three will have a happier ending. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching me fail. <laughs> if you like that, if you like watching me fail, big ol' thumbs up for that. That's my consolidation prize. And uh, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can check out that next video, hopefully where I get a success. So thanks again for watching. Till next time, peace out and geek out.